so we can start. I want us to look at taxation of higher purchase entity. So still continuing with the taxation of business income. Now I want us to look at higher purchase entity and leasing entity. Now, what are higher purchase entity? Or if you buy a product on a higher purchase. Now, this is where the company sells goods to a customer and the customer pays a deposit. Once you commit a deposit, you take the possession of the asset and then the balance will be paid in installment and it usually attracts the interest. So therefore, how do you determine the higher purchase price? Now, to determine the higher, higher purchase price, you can take the cash price, but you're saying that higher purchase attracts interest. You add the interest or to get the higher purchase price, you can take the deposit, then you add the total installment. So that means in this case, the vendor makes two incomes. One, there is the normal profit. Yeah, the normal profit. In case you have to sell this product on a cash basis, how much would you have got? Eh? Got it. That is the cash price. You minus uh, the cost. That's how you get the normal profit. Also, the other profit is the interest. Yeah, because interest, remember when uh, you sell on credit, you attract interest. Now that interest to the seller becomes an income. So you have two, inter uh, two incomes. One is the normal profit or the normal gross profit, and then the interest. Then in case of our interest and how do you allocate? We have three methods of allocating this interest. Number one, you can use the uh, straight line method. And this is where you allocate. Whenever a customer pays an installment, think that you had earned an interest of 10,000. That's the interest income. Eh? And then this customer was to pay in four installments. So that means you divide by four. So that means whenever the customer makes an installment, you recognize an interest income of 25. So that's one method of uh, allocating interest. Number two, you can also use what we call the sum of digits method. Now, under sum of digit method, this is why you allocate the interest over the installment period. Now, for example, in this case, assume that the interest earned was 10,000 and the customer was to pay in four installments. So how does the sum of digit work? So it's one plus two plus three plus four. The sum of the higher purchase installment period, you add that to get 10. So that means the first installment, how much would you recognize? So you'll take four over 10, the second installment, three over 10, third installment, two over 10, and last installment, one over 10 of the interest and of 10,000. So that means whenever a customer pays the first installment, it recognizes an interest income of 4,000. Second installment, it recognizes 3,000. Third installment, 2,000. And for the installment, you recognize 1,000. That's what you call the sum of digits method. And then lastly, you can use the actuarial method. Now, actuarial method is all about determining the present value. Yeah, the present value of the expected interest during that period. As simple as that. Yeah, so now let's go through what we have in our notes. So higher purchase is a transaction which allows for the acquisition of an asset by paying for deposit and taking the possession of the installment immediately and the balance is payable in installment and is subject to interest. Now, note that there is a difference between what you call the higher purchase, higher purchase and what you call the installment sale. There is something we call installment sale. Now, for higher purchase, once you pay the deposit, you take the possession of the asset. But for installment sale, is what you call Ripam Dogom Dogo. Now, Ripam Dogom Dogo, for example, you have an asset that has interested you. You don't have the full cash. You just pay like a small installment. See that product will be dedicated sold. Then the seller will stay with that product. Once you are done with the payment, 
you take the asset. That's what you call the installment sale. But higher purchase, you just pay the deposit, you take the asset. Yeah, so they are totally different. What are the difference between a higher purchase and Lipa Mdoko Mdoko? Installment sales. Okay. So in higher purchase, it attracts interest. Installment sales does not attract the interest. Eh? Yeah, if, for example, you had a crop, yeah, worth 3,000. Then the seller, kamwambia igu eme nipendeza, haki niweke usiuzie mtu. Yana kwambia alipia kitu kidogo. Yes, so for example, you pay 1,000. Now what happened immediately? And I talk about this print. Ama inaandikuwa sold. Have you gone to a supermarket, you know, a fridge, miadikuwa sold? But that does not mean that there may be the buyer had paid everything. No, he just committed a small amount. It was indicated sold. Eh? Yeah, so... Higher purchase possession, you take it immediately upon the payment of installment. Installment sales possession will only be after full payment. Higher purchase on the other side attracts interest. Installment sale does not attract interest. Higher purchase require deposit. Installment sale does not require deposit. All the amount are paid in installment. For higher purchase, there is an agreement of a specific amount that will be paying for each installment. But for installment sale of the Lipa Mdogo Mdogo, you only pay what you have. What about the ownership? You see that once you pay the first installment here, the cloth is yours in Andiqua Sod. So that means ownership is transferred immediately. That's for installment sale. But for higher purchase, you only took the possession, but the product belongs to the owner. So the ownership still belongs to the seller. So the ownership will only be transferred upon completion of the payment of all the interest. Installment sale ownership is transferred immediately. It's only that you cannot take the possession. Also for higher purchase, remember you paid a deposit, you took the possession. What if you default to pay? What will happen? I'll come for my asset. So that means for higher purchase, there is repossession. What about in installment sale? There is no repossession because the seller is the one with the, with the asset. You cannot repossess what you already have. Eh? Yeah, so I wanted you to get the difference between the two. Now, the higher purchase company earns income in form of, number one, is the normal gross profit, yeah, which is the difference between the cash price and the cost of sales. And then number two is the interest income. And the interest income is the difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price. Now, interest earned can be allocated to various year of income using the following method. Yeah, you can use straight line method, sum of digit, or accrual method. Good. Now, where the company deals with very many items which are of raw value, it is difficult to determine the interest to be allocated per year of income, and therefore the sales are recognized at higher purchase price, and the gross profit will be determined as follows. So, if you determine their sales at higher purchase price, now to get the gross profit, you take the higher purchase price, you minus the cost of sale. And how do you determine the recognized? gross profit you see what happens whenever you sell on higher purchase what if you sell a product and then this customer will pay for more than one year that means there is income you you have earned but you have not received by the end of the year that's what you call the unrealized income so you also have to provide for that unrealized income so to get the recognized gross profit it's allowed you restrict or you just take the proportion of the cash collected from your customer, that's from the data. Because if you sell on higher purchase, you are selling on credit. So there must be a debtor's account. Then you divide by the higher purchase sales. You are taking the proportion. This is what we sold. This is the proportion of cash we received. Then you multiply by the gross profit. That's how we get the recognized uh, gross profit. Or you just take the normal gross profit the normal gross profit. But of this gross profit, there is an income which has not yet been realized. You expect to receive it in the future. That's what you call unrealized profit. You raise provision for unrealized profit. And that's how you get recognized gross profit. And how do you determine the provision for unrealized profit? Now, this I get the unrealized profit. 
subvention for unrealized profits. You just take the proportion of the outstanding balance or outstanding amount. They are be it for the debtors, the debtors at the end of the year. Then you divide by the higher purchase sales and then you multiply by the gross profit. So that means for you to get the outstanding amount or outstanding balance, you must prepare some key account. And which are those major accounts prepared? Major accounts prepared when accounting for higher purchase. One, you need to open the higher purchase debt of account. Actually, this is a major account. Because remember, you are selling on credit because once the customer pays a deposit, they take the possession of the asset. So you expect to receive some amount from them. So you must prepare the debtor's account. Also, in case the debtor defaults to pay, you can repossess that asset. You also need to prepare the repossession account. And the motive of preparing the repossession account is to determine whether in case you repossess, will you repossess it again? Will you repossess at a loss? And then also you see that another thing you have also to prepare is the unrealized profit account. So how do we prepare the debtor's account? Higher purchase debtor's account. It's a normal asset account where you take the bars grow down being an asset. What increases the data is the sale on credit. They think that we are selling on credit because we're selling on higher purchase. So you factor in the higher purchase sales. Then of these higher purchase sales, when the customer pays, you reduce the value of your data. So cash received from your customer. Also in case there is bad debt, bad debt reduce the value of the data. What if you repossess? You see, if you repossess, that means the customer has defaulted. So that amount you expect to receive, but now has defaulted, you also eliminate that in case there is a repossession. And that's how we get now the balance carried down. Now, this balance carried down is now what you provide the unrealized profit for. You take the outstanding balance, this is the balance at the end of the year, you divide by the higher purchase sales, then you ask yourself, of that amount you expected to receive, how much is unrealized? And then the other account prepared is repossession account. And we're saying that repossession account, the motive of preparing this account is to determine that in case you repossess the asset, will you repossess it again or will you repossess at a loss? And how determine whether it's again or loss? So first of all, you'll take the outstanding amount. This you created on the debtor's account. Eh? The outstanding amount. So at the date of repossession, this client, then you take that asset you have already repossessed, you take it back to the stock. When taking it to the stock, you have to record it in monetary terms. So you, you, uh, you do a revaluation. So you value that asset. Valuation. Then of this outstanding amount, the profit you expected to get from this customer. Because how compati at cost, mm -mm, would compati at selling price, right? So there is a profit you expected to receive. But since you have repossessed the asset, you no longer expect to get that profit. Now that's what you call the unrealized profit. So you eliminate the unrealized profit on the outstanding amount. If the valuation of the asset will be more than the outstanding amount, that means you repossess the asset at a gain. Repossession gain. But if the outstanding amount was more than the value of that asset after repossession, that means you repossess at a loss. So it will be on the credit side. Repossession at a loss. What's that? So we can look at that for one minute, then we do an illustration. So I want us to do an illustration, the one we have in our handout. But first of all, you can look at that.
Yeah. Let's do an illustration. The one from the handout. For the notes I had shared, so there is an illustration there. We are told that the following information was presented to you by the management of Maripo Pole Enterprise Limited. The company deals in the sale of photocopier machine on higher purchase terms. The company purchases the photocopier machine at 60,000 each. So that's the cost. Huh? The cost of one machine is 60,000. Mm -hmm. Number two, the higher purchase price per unit comprise of a deposit of 16,000 and eight equal quarter installment of 8,000. The cash price per unit is 70,000. So you're given the cash price, you sell on cash, it's 70,000. But what about the higher purchase price? You see that, how do we get the higher purchase price? You take the cash price plus the interest, but you're not given the interest. Or you take the deposit plus the total installment. So, and you are told that, number two, the higher purchase price per unit comprises of a deposit of 16,000. So the deposit is 16,000 and eight equal quarter installment of 8,000. 8,000. Eight installment, 64,000, you add 16. That one is 80,000, right? Good. So that means the higher purchase price for one photocopy machine it will be 80,000. So how much the interest income? How much the interest income? If the cash price is 70, higher purchase is 80. So you're making an interest of how much? Yeah, it's not that complicated. Eh? Number three. During the end of that first December 2020, the company sold 40 units, of which correction of 56,960 were received as at the year end. So now let's open the debtor's account. I have purchased debtor's account. Mm -hmm. Also, we can prepare also the repossession account. Those are the major account prepared. You see that for the repossession account, I have given you the format. You'll take the outstanding amount or the balance. Then you take this item back to the stock at a valuation. Then of this outstanding amount, there is a profit you expected to receive. But now since you have repossessed, you won't receive. So you make a provision for the unrealized profit. Ah. Let's read number three again. During the year and that first December 2020, the company sold 40, 40 units, of which correction of 56,960 were received. So during the year, we made sales. Remember, you're selling on credit. And we sold 40, 40 units, each at how much? Here is the high purchase selling price. How much is that? At 80. So how much was the sales for the year? You got that two? That two, that's two thousand, like that. Eh? Oh. Zero baby. Like that, eh? Uh -huh. Then of this high purchases, the customer paid. You say that you credit the cash received. Cash received. You are told that note number three. Yeah, during the year and that first December 2020, the company sold 40, 40 units of which correction of 56,960 were received. So 56,960. Yeah, remember this, we just multiplied by 80. So let our figure be in thousand. Number four. During the year and that first December 2010, the company repossessed 40 units which had been sold earlier in the year. So we did a repossession. 
The customer had already paid how much? 640. So how much is the outstanding amount? So outstanding amount will be very simple. The company repossessed 40 units. So you'll take 40. You multiply by the higher purchase price, which was 80. You determine the higher purchase sale. But you're told that the customer had already paid 640. So how much was the outstanding amount? An amount of 2560. Now this 2560 is also what you eliminate from the data because those sales were already included here, but we have already repossessed. So a repossession. And the outstanding amount was 2560. 560. So you debit here, you credit there. You do that number four. During the year and that first December 2020, the company possessed 40 units, which had been sold early in the year. The customer had already paid 640 on these units, which is included in the total cash collection for the year. The repossessed units were revalued at 52 each at the year end. So they were taken back to the stock at a valuation of 52. Take back to the stock at 40 units, each at a value of 52. 520 times four, you get 20. All right? 2018. Then you need to provide for an realized profit. You see this outstanding amount. We had recognized these sales at higher purchase. There was a profit we were expecting to receive from this customer, but now we have repossessed the item. So we won't get that profit. So you provide for unrealized profit. So, and how do we get the unrealized profit? Now, unrealized profit, you take the outstanding amount. You divide by the higher purchase sales, you multiply by the gross profit. And note that for unrealized profit, we compute two. One is for the outstanding data at the end of the year, as well as on repossession. So we provide for unrealized profit, number one, on data, as well as unrealized profit on repossession. Let's start with the data, outstanding amount. So give me the outstanding amount. That means the balance carried down. So this one will be that two, that two, like that, that two, that two. How much would be a balance carried down? Sorry? 263, 680. All right, now let's do that. And realize profit on data. So you take the outstanding amount, which is 263, 680. You divide by the higher purchase sales. And this was the higher purchase sales. 44 units each at 80, which was an amount of that two, that two, you get the proportion. Then you multiply by the gross profit. How do you get the gross profit? Uh, let me show you how to get the gross profit. It's very simple. How much is the selling price? How much is the selling price? Seniority. How much was the cost? 60. So that means per machine, you are making a profit of how much? 20. Then how many units had you sold during the year? 40, 40. So you had made a total gross profit of how much? That is 8, 800, right? So it's 40, you add zero, then you multiply by two. Emma. You get 80, 800. Good. So the gross profit will be 80, 800. So now give me the and realize profit on this amount. 65? Right. So that means of this profit, this is the unrealized. Higher. On repossession, we do the same. The formula is the same. We take the outstanding amount. So on repossession, this was the outstanding amount. 25, 16. You divide by the higher purchase sales. How much was the sales? This was the sales. You had sold 40 units each at 18. So get the higher purchases on the repossessed good. Then you multiply by the gross profit. So how much is the gross profit? It's still 80 minus 16. You get the gross profit per unit. And then you repossess how many units? 
40. Is it 800? Good. So 800. So how much is that? 640. Yeah, so that means of this outstanding amount on repossession, the profit you expected to receive was 640, of which you won't receive, so you eliminate 640. So do we repossess that again, Waros? This side is more, eh? Uh, so how much is this? You get 27, 20? 27, 20. So you repossess that again. Repossession again. An amount of 100 then? 106. Mm -hmm. Note number five. Note number five. Operating expenses during the year amounted to 7.4 million. Number six, the revenue authority has reached an agreement with the management of the company, whereby profits for tax purposes will be determined on the basis of the proportionate of cash collected from customer for the year of sale. In short, the proportion, that's what we are trying to look at the proportion so that for the unrealized profit, it will not be taxed. So you only have to recognize uh, gross profit. That's what it means. Eh? Required. Taxable profit or loss for my poor enterprise for the year ended that past, uh, that is of December 2020. So this is my poor. Eh? Enterprises. Computation of taxable profit or loss for the year ended. So the year end on that first of December 2020. And the shillings are in thousand. So we start with sales. We sold 40, 40 units each at each at 80 and you get an amount of huh? 323 200 then you raise cost of sale 40 40 units and how much is the cost per unit 60 so how much is that sorry 240 to 400. Eh? So, how much was the gross profit then? Was it 8800? 8800. And that's what you had computed here. Then, of this 8800, you make a provision, you have provision for unrealized profit. Just call it the unrealized profit because you see, we're selling on credit. So what you expect to receive over all the period, eh? what you receive the next year will not be taxed now. So you'll be given that provision. It will not be taxed. So for provision for year is profit or for year is profit for the year. On debtors, it's an amount of 65, 920. And also we had the other one on repossession, an amount of 640. So how much was the total and year is profit for the period? Because this 640 had already been included in these days for the year. Get 66? 560. And that's how now you get what you call a very cognized gross profit. How much will be the recognized gross profit? 14? 14. Then you can add, you repossess an item at again. So there was repossession, okay. an amount of 160. Then from there, you raise allowable expenses. And you are given in note number five. Eh? Operating expenses during the year amounted to 7.4. So there was operating expenses, which is an amount of 7.4. Oh, I don't think we had any other expense. So how much will be now our taxable profit?
get an amount of so if you are to get the tax expense you just take 30 percent of seven million you get two point we can review that one for two minutes we do another illustration September 2021. Question 3B. September 2021. Question 3B.
The following information was presented to you by the credit management, uh, by the management of Credit Traders Limited as at that 1st of December, 2020. The company deals in the sale of manufacturing machine on higher purchase terms. Number one, the company purchases machine at 600 each. That's the cost. So the cost of one machine it's 600,000. Number two, the higher purchase price per unit comprises of a deposit of 160 and eight quarterly installment of 8,000. Higher purchase price, so that is made up of the deposit, of which the deposit is 160 plus total installment to that, and eight quarterly installment of 80,000. So it's 80,000. Times eight, you get six forty thousand. You add one sixty, you get an amount of eight hundred. So the higher purchase price per machine is eight hundred thousand. Cash price per unit is seven hundred. Number three, during the year that first December twenty twenty, the company sold forty eighty manufacturing machine, of which correction of five sixty nine six hundred were received at the year end. So. Higher purchase debtors account. So during the year we made sales and the company sold 48 units. How much was the higher purchase selling price? Each at 800. So how much was the revenue for the period? Three. That 264. Like that. Eh? Now that was the sales for the period. But you see now. This customer are to pay into how many installments? Eight quarterly. So how many years are those? Those are two years. Higher. You see, when preparing the income statement, you need to recognize the revenue for the year. But you see here, this um, revenue we expect to receive within the next two, two years. So if you are to tax this, that means the revenue you expect to receive this year and next year. So that's why, do you now understand why you are providing the provision for unrealized profit? Any profit to do with coming period will not be taxed. We only tax for this period? This period, good. Yeah. Because the sales were made at this period, but now the, uh, the cash will be received now. Uh, we have some cash that will be received between this year and the coming financial year. Now, of this sale, the customer paid some amount. Cash received. That one reduced the value of the debtors. Uh, we are told that during the year and that first of December 2020, uh, 2020, the company sold 4080 manufacturing machine, of which collection of 569,600. 569, yeah, 600 were received at the year end. Number four, during the year, the company repossessed 60 machines which had been sold early in the year. Eight year, good, we repossessed. So if we repossess, we don't expect to recover that amount from the data. So we eliminate, and then you also need to prepare the repossession account so that you can determine whether you repossess the asset at a gain or loss. Repossession account. Say that you debit the outstanding amount, Then you take this item back to the stock at a valuation. And then for the outstanding amount, there is profit you expected to receive, but now you won't receive. So that's what you call the unrealized profit. Uh, we are told that during the year, the company possessed 80 machines. So 80, and the selling price was 800. So that first of all, determine how much was the higher purchases on the repossessed asset. But you are told that. The customer had already paid 6.4 million. Of this sales, the customer had already paid 6.4. So how much was the starting amount?
57? 600. And this amount is also what you eliminate from the data. 57, 600. That was the outstanding amount. Mm -hmm. Then you are told that? Yeah, that the customer had already paid 6.4 million on the units, which had uh, which was included in the total cash correction for the year. The repossessed units were revalued at 520 each at the year end. So of the 80 machines, we revalued them each at 520. So how much was the total value? Sorry? 41,600. Then of this outstanding amount, we need to provide an unrealized profit. And how do we get the unrealized profit? We say that you will take the outstanding amount or outstanding balance, you divide by the higher purchase sales, you multiply by the gross profit. And you see that we provide for both the outstanding data and on repossession. So first of all, let's get for data, give me the balance carry down. So it's that 264, that 264, sorry? 48,800. So we compute unrealized profit number one for the data, as well as unrealized profit on repossession. So let's start with the data. You take the outstanding amount, of which we have is that 148,800. You divide by the higher purchase sales. These were the higher purchase sales. 48 each at 800. Just one second, which is that 264,000. Then you multiply by the gross profit. Sorry? The balance cut down is wrong. It was an amount of. Sorry? 800. So this is 26, 36, 800. Then you multiply by the gross profit. So gross profit, you take the selling price, which is 800,000, and the cost of each was 600, so that you get the gross profit per, uh, per machine. And then you multiply by the number of total machine, which was 40, 18. Can't be. This is 200, eh? Zero, zero, 40, four, eight times two. Sorry? 816, eh? Ah, good. 816,000. So, 659, 200. We do the same uh, for repossession. The formula is the same. And the direct profit, you take the outstanding amount. On repossession, the outstanding amount was 57,600. You divide by the higher purchase sales. 80 machines each at 800. 80 machines each at 800. You multiply by the 800 minus 600. Then we repossessed 80. That's 16,000, right? So 16,000. So 16,000, how much is the NDRX profit? 14? 14,400. So that means of this outstanding amount, the NDRX profit was 14,400. Uh -huh. Which side is more? 40, 50, that's 55. So this side is more, right? Yeah, 57,600. 57, 6, and that means we possess at a loss. A possession loss of how much? 1,000? Yeah, 1,600. Number five. Expenses incurred in the course of the year included rent expenses are allowable. Legal expenses of 1.2, of which 320 was in respect of defense against illegal importation of a machine, illegal. So that one becomes a disallowable. 
There was also advertising and marketing, that's allowable. Salaries and management expense, allowable. Purchase of mobile forklift in August 2020. The date is irrelevant. Eh? Yeah, that one called five away. Eh? Yeah, yeah, we see that if even if you buy an asset one month to the end of the year, provided the business was operational for the entire year, you provide the way and for the entire year. Yeah, we don't apportion. Not unless the business was only functional for only part of the year. Other incomes included a loyalty of 289.750 net of nah, net of withholding tax. A dividend from Uzima Cooperative Society 120 net of withholding tax. Yeah. Is it taxable or untaxable? Dividend from Uzima Cooperative. That is taxable. We say that dividends are not taxable, right? But for the circles and cooperative, we are known as non-qualifying dividends, of which the withholding tax is at 15%, which is not final. Are you together? It's not final. But the other dividend from the company, the withholding tax is 5%, which is final. That's why it's not taxable. Yeah. The dividend from cooperatives and circles. They are known as non qualifying dividend. They are withholding tax is 15%, which is not final. Yeah, so therefore it will be taxed again. Eh? But from the company, they are qualifying 5% withholding tax, which is final. Then, number seven, you to that the revenue authority has reached an agreement, an agreement with the company whereby the profit for tax purposes will be determined on the basis of proportionate of cash collected for the customer for the year of sale. Yeah, so that means you have to restrict by eliminating the unrealized profit. That's what it means. Required. Taxable profit or loss for credit leaders limited for the year and that first December 2012 mark. So how do we get that? So, So it start with the sales. We already have the sales. Here are the sales. We sold 40, 80 machines, each at 800. We got that to 64,000. Then you raise the cost of sales. 40, 80 machines, each at a cost of 600. You get an amount of how much? 24, 48,000. That's how we get the gross profit. Is it an amount of 816? Yeah, it's what you had already computed here. Then you raise and realize profit. Now, you see in this gross profit, there is profit which is not yet realized. So you eliminate eh? it, will be allowed for tax purposes. For unrealized profit, number one, we had on data, amount of 659,200. Also, we had on reposition, an amount of 14,400. What do you get? Is it 67 or 66? 67? Like that, eh? So how much will be our recognized gross profit? Sorry? 142? 400. Then from there, we can list allowable expenses. There's allowable expenses. One, there is reposition loss. That one is an operating loss. Huh? Reposition loss, an amount of 1.6. Mm -hmm. Note number five expenses incurred in the course of the year included 
also there was rent expense, an amount of 420. Yeah, and kind of you, you be very keen, eh? Don't indicate for 20,000. You see our figure for 10,000, eh? Yeah. Also, there is legal expenses. 1.2, you minus. Of which 320 was in respect of defense against legal importation of the machine. You rest 320, you get an amount of eight. 880, eh? 880. Advertising and marketing. Marketing, an amount of 520. Five. Size and management expenses. So salaries and management expenses, 890. Then there is purchase of mobile corporate. That's wear and tear at the rate of 25%. All the other moving self preparing asset. You need now to understand it or you cram it. All the motor vehicle is at the rate of how much? 25% good. Of 2.8, 14, is it 700? Yeah, and that I get the taxable profit. Now give me the taxable profit. Sorry? 1373? 85. Then we add other specified sources of income. Note number six, other income include loyalty. Uh, loyalty of 289.750 net of withholding tax. We don't tax net income, we tax the gross. So it will be 289.750, this is what it means. Huh? How much is the withholding tax on royalty? Royalty, how much is the rate? It's five percent. I remember you writing somewhere. We see that all the withholding tax is the rate of five percent, except for the interest and dividend from cooperative and circle. Namukandi Kamahari. Then Karudia Tena, Mukandi Katena, Sasamis How Tena. So it's at rate of five percent. So that means two eight nine. 750 is equivalent to 95%. What about 100%? So it's that amount you multiply by 100 over 95. Those three? 305,000. Then there was dividend from Uzima Cooperative. Dividend from Cooperative. Yeah, 120 net of withholding tax. So that withholding tax on dividends from cooperative and circle and interest at the rate of 15%. So we take 100 over 85. This is what it means. 120, they have already deducted 15%. So it's equivalent to 85%. What about 100? Good. So how much was that? 120 divided by 0 0.85, 141, sorry, 176. So now give me the adjusted taxable profit. Forget. 583? 561. If you had to get tax payable, how much would be the tax payable? Yeah. If you had to get the tax payable, it'll be how much? So tax payable, you just take 30% of 
yeah, 583, 1. You get an amount of 175.068. Now, that's the tax expense, but now you want the tax payable. You get the tax payable. Now you raise withholding tax. Are you together? So I have not asked about the tax expense. I've asked about the tax pay payable. So this tax, you see here we had the gross, eh? but they had received net. So they had already deducted the withholding tax. So here you'll take 305 minus 289,750. So how much was the dividend? Uh, how much was the withholding tax at the source? 15 to 50. Mm -hmm. Then on dividend from cooperative, 141, 120, that is 21, 170. So net tax payable will be an amount of 175 minus 36. Sorry? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've added. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was not supposed to be. It should be just 305, right? And this one should be 141. One. Correct. Uh, but so, is that one? <laughs> okay. Yeah, kind of be very keen when it comes to standardization. Eh? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, this one should be. Sorry, about? On where and there, uh -huh. and I remember explaining. I remember explaining that. Eh? I say that irregardless, nanikatumia kwanza sentestano. Irregardless whether the asset was acquired even one day to the end of the year, you provide where and there for the entire year, provided the business was operational during the year. Yes, if you say my class, then say this class. Sorry? Umeambi waje? Hapo umeambi wa ni 25%? 2020 to 25? But it's only at Ujibu 2020. Tunajibu saa hizi, eh? We use the standard rate for how much? 30%. Not unless they specify that the tax rate for that year was 25%. Good, so you can take a small break.
So let's look at taxation of leasing entities. So we do the same uh, the same sitting. Uh, that is September twenty twenty one. Question one B. Question one B. Now let's start with part of the question, part A. One of the recent trends in the field of taxation is the introduction of digital service tax. Required, explain the meaning and operation of the digital service tax, three marks. How can you explain that? And you have three marks, this is an exam. And you are told that, write everything. I know you cannot leave any theory question and answer. What should you write? the meaning of the operation of digital service tax. This is a tax on what? Digital? Digital businesses. Eh? I just say that there is nothing more complicated. Eh? Ah, such as what? Yeah, more, sorry? Streaming, eh? like what? Netflix. Net, like Netflix. <laughs> Sorry? High taxes. What are you saying? High tax. Uh -uh. <laughs> High tax is a form of paying tax. Eh? Now, this is a digital service tax. You know, nowadays we're in another uh, era where most of the business are conducted online. Hmm? So even TikTokers, they are being paid. What are they selling? So they're online contact. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of go through your handout. Eh? The handout I had given you, the one which is typed. You have all the theories on digital tax, which product are taxed, how do you remit them? Also, Akron has all the summarized notes on taxation that you need to know, even about the one border, uh, one stop border post, about the, what else do we have there? Also, we have the tax agents. All that, it's already there. Eh? So kind of don't wait for me to come and discuss that. Okay. And the others will carry, even can be 50% of your exam. Yeah, for advanced taxation. Yeah. Also describe three types of transaction where digital service tax is applicable. So what do we tax? Yeah. We have downloadable, downloadable material such as music, KC, college app. <laughs> so remember that it's a business conducted, right? Yes, and we pay tax. Eh? But now the government, they are coming. Okay, the rate, how much was the rate of the digital tax? Hmm? You know, when it comes to tax, the government of Kenya, they are becoming more, more creative. Uh, more creative eh? So at the time it was 2%. Now they want to scrap it to be replaced by VAT. So that means from 2% to 16%. Per, 16%. Actually, it was 1%, <laughs> not even 2%. Eh? Yeah. So, part B of the question. Pockmark's Enterprise is a resident uh, company 
that deals with the asset leasing. That is operating activity. For the year ended that first December 2020, the company reported the following transactions. Number one, asset risk in the cost of the year. Manufacturing machinery to Pendo Limited at an annual risk cost of 4.2. 10 fire on car to some tech tour for four months of 40,000 each per month. At the end of the fourth month, some tech tours returned four sar on car and renewed the lease for the other at an additional three months at a discounted pay of by 10. Five lorries to add the limited at an annual lease of 800,000 per lorry. However, the lease was terminated after nine months after it was found that the lorries had serious mechanical problems. Six pickups vehicle to Fahari Limited in Rwanda for 200,000 per month for the whole year. A computer to Digitech Limited at an annual risk of 200,000. Number two, Foxmas Enterprise incurred the following expenditure in the course of the year. Purchase of manufacturing machine for leasing, Installation cost and repair of the manufacturing machine before use. The installation cost should be capitalized. Mm -hmm. Purchase of two salon car, each at 2.1. Purchase of lorry, four tons. Admin expenses. Legal expenses of 240, out of which 100 was in respect of defense of an illegal breach of lease agreement. I mean, I read. A breach of risk argument. Marketing costs were 300, with 80,000 being the direction of a billboard for advertising. A yeah, billboard, you see, that is an asset. So you qualify, it's an capital expenditure, you qualify for A and T. Number three, the following additional information was provided. Number one, pickup vehicle whose written down value as at 1st of January 2020, that's at the beginning of the year. Uh, was for 20, was sold upon expiry of lease in 2020 for 580. What do we call that? We disposed an, an item at a gain, right? Yes. So that gain will it be taxed or will not be taxed? Is it taxable or untaxable? That is taxable. Is it that capital gain are not taxed? Are you together? Now, this is what you call a trading receipt. You see, you see that if a company owns an asset, that's an uncurrent asset. That's what you call the capital gain. It should not be taxed. How are Magari called your stock? Are you together? So, wanafanya nini? Wanalis, wanachukua, wana exchange, na ingine. So, that means what they gain is part of the operating activity. Now, that's what you call a trading receipt. I take you back to Maridadi Motors. They sell car. What if you exchange the vehicle? What will happen? And then they exchange it again. Will it be taxable or not taxable? You say it's a capital gain. Not a capital gain. Are you together? Depending on what they are dealing with, the nature of their business. But in, for example, you see that is another company like KCB Bank, and they dispose their asset. Now that one is what we call a capital gain. They'll not be taxed. Good. Now, this is what we call a trading receipt. Number two, the written down value of the foreign asset as at 1st of January 2020. Or, so you have for the lorry, computer, motor vehicle, then we have furniture. Then you are told that other income of Foxmax Enterprise include, number one, uh, we have interest income from Fanisi, deposit taking microfinance, 240, well, that's net. Dividend income from 190 circle, 120. Taxable or untaxable? Taxable, good. Loyalty income of 400. The corporate tax rate applicable during the year was 25% required. Adjusted taxable income or loss and the tax payable, if any, for Poxmax Enterprise for the year and that part of December 2020.
So we start with the income. Note number one. Asset list in the cost of the year was manufacturing machinery to Pendo Limited at an annual risk of 4.2. So it's risk income on number one. We raised a manufacturing machinery. at an annual risk of 4.2. 10 Saron car. Risk of Saron car. 10 Saron car to Samtech tour for four months at 40,000 each per month. So it's 40,000. You want by by? Is it four? Then you want by by? Multiply by 10. It's 40,000 per month each. Remember, they were turned out on car, right? So, get an amount of how much? You get 1.6, eh? 1.6. Then, we also have other sat on car. We are told that number three. At the end of the four months, some tech to us returned four saron car. Returned four. So how many would be remaining? Six, right? Aye. At the end of the fourth month, some tech to us returned four saron car and renewed the lease. Yeah, and renewed the lease for the other for an additional three months at a discounted pay by how much? Ten. So it's six for three months, right? Times 40 each, but now they are given a discount of how much? Okay. They'll only pay 90%. So in short, it's 90% of 40,000. You get what, how much they'll be paying for three months for six star on car. You get? 648,000, eh? 648,000. Four at four. Five lorries to add limited at an annual risk of 800 per lorry. Lorries. 800,000. They are told that. Five lorries to add limited at an annual risk of 800 per lorry. So you multiply by? You multiply by five. But remember, 800 is per annum. But you know that. However, the lease was terminated after nine months after it was found that the lorries had serious mechanical. Problem. Remember the 800,000 was per annum. So you multiply by nine over six times three, is it three million? Get three million. Good. Then the other bullet six pickups vehicle to Fahari Limited in Rwanda for 200 per month for the whole year. Pickups six. Uh -uh. Six pickups vehicle to Fahad Limited in Rwanda for 200 per month for the whole year. So it'll take 200 times. Kingereza, Hakuna six. You see, you are not told it's 200. It's 200 per month, not for each. Eh? Yeah, that's what they agreed. Eh? So get an amount of how much? You get two points? 2.4. Uh -huh. uh, then we have computer to digitate limited at an annual lease of 200. So computer. Yeah, at an annual lease of 200. There was another income, trading receipts. Uh, note number three. Note number three, the first bullet. A pickup vehicle whose return down value was at the beginning of the year, 1st of January 2010, was for 20, was sold upon the expiry of lease in 2020 at 580. So it's 580. And the current amount was 400. And that was again by how much? 100. And one six. Then you can deduct you raise allowable expenses. 
I rubber have expenses. Let's go to note number two. Boxmax Enterprise incurred the following expenditure in the course of the year. Purchase of manufacturing machine for leasing. Now that one is claimed for wear and tear. Installation cost and repair of the manufacturing machine before use. Is it arable or disarable? That is bizarre. It was before use. Eh? That's what we call the preliminary expense. Yeah. Installation cost will be added to the cost of that machinery. And then we had purchase of two saron cam, each at 2.1, also you came for wear and tear. Purchase of rolling, wear and tear. Then there is admin expenses. Admin expenses an amount of 2.4. Then there is legal expenses. Legal expenses. So legal expenses of 240, out of which 100 was in respect of, uh, of defense of an alleged breach of lease agreement. So it's 240, you minus 100. So the only arrival will be an amount of 100 and 140. Then there was Marketing costs were 300, with 80 being erection of a billboard for advertising. So you have marketing costs. Marketing costs. So it's 300 minus 80, you get an amount of? Get to 20,000. Right, now let's provide for investment allowance. Yes. Sorry? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. They are all for marketing. Mm -mm. That's what you think, eh? but not correct. Okay, it's part of marketing. But if you see a billboard, a neon sign, we say that it's an asset for the company. Sawa, sawa. So being an asset, therefore, becomes a capital exp expenditure. And you qualify for way Way and tear. Yes, they are classified at a marketing expense, but for tax purposes, that's an asset. Eh? Yes. So now let's claim for way and tear. So let's start the bullet number three. Sorry, note number three. Bullet number three. What do we have? The written down value of the following asset as at 1st of January 2020, there was rolling. Rolling, you take, is that the rate of how much? You take 25% of how much? It's 4 million, eh? Then you add, you go back to note number two. During the year, we purchased an additional rolling. Yeah, part of at an amount of 1.1.8. 1. 1. 25%, that is 5.8. That is 29. 29 divided by 2. 14,500. 1.45. Eh? Eh? Mm -hmm. Then you also have computers. Computer is at the rate of? Still is 25. Of 420, that is 210. 210, you get 105. Eh? Or was there any purchase of computer? No, so it's 105. Mm -hmm. Then there is motor vehicle. You take 25% of how much? Oh, 1.2. Eh? Yeah, 600 to get 300. Eh? They also? Was there any purchase of motor vehicle? No. Uh -uh. Saron car, not part of that. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> then there is furniture. Mm -hmm. Furniture is an amount of? No. Is at the rate of 10% of 100 and 
18, you get an amount of 18. There was also billboard. Billboard, at the rate of? Uh -uh, kuna kitu kama hiyo. A billboard is at the rate of? Aya, partition is at the rate of? 10. Therefore, billboard? Yeah, and it's 10%. We say that all the assets that were not, that were in class four, all of them now will qualify at the rate of 10%? 10%. So how much is that? So we take 10%. Of how much? Yeah, so how much was the billboard? 80,000, eh? 80,000, you get an amount of? 8,000. Then there was, let's go to note number two. There was another asset acquired. What do we acquire? Manufacturing machine. Uh-huh. At the rate of? Good, 50%. Of how much? Six million, but you capitalize the installation cost. Eh? Yeah, installation cost and repair of the mach manufacturing machine before use, 240. That's 3,000, you add 120. Eh? You get that one? Ama. The neighbor. Good. Then also there was purchase of two Saron car, each at 2.1. Saron car, at the rate of 25%. Then Saron car is an uncommercial vehicle. It will be restricted to a maximum of how much? Uh -uh. Two million was the old rate. Now it's three, three million. But you know that each costed 2.1, so you are not restricting it. Yeah? So it's 25% of 4 points. Yeah, since there were two Saron car, each should be restricted to a maximum of 3 million. But we are told that each was purchased at 2.1, and you're given that total is 4.2. That is 21, you get, is it? 1050. Is it 105 or 1050? 1050. Thousand. At the purchase of what? And that's how now you get your taxable profit. Once you get your taxable profit, you add other incomes. Now, note number three the third bullet, the third bullet you are told that other income of Foxmark's enterprise included. It was interest income from financial deposit taking microfinance. So there was interest income, which is an amount of 240, but we are told it's net. Eh? So interest rate, the withholding interest is at the rate of 15. Eh? You just divide by 0 0.85, or you multiply by 100 over 85 percent. What do you get? Yes? Purchase of? There was purchase of Rory. See, this one and we added 1.8. Eh? Mm -hmm. hey, 240 divided by 0.85 is how much? Two eighty two. Three fifty three. Mm -hmm. Then there was dividend income from 190 circle. Taxable and taxable. Yeah, this is taxable. We see that dividend from circle and cooperating, they are non qualifying dividend. Withholding tax is 5%, uh, 15%, which is not final. Yeah, so we have dividend from circles. It's 120 divided by 0 0.85. Or you multiply by 100 over 185. 141? 173. 176. Then there is royalty income, 400 net. 
Loyalty income. The withholding tax on loyalty is how much? 5%. So you divide by 0 0.95 or you multiply by 100 over 95. 421. Sorry? 050. And that's how you get the adjusted taxable profit. As simple as that. So that's what I wanted us to recover. I think now we are done with business income. So now we are remaining with only, close, uh, we did cross border as our first class. So you only now have back duty. Okay, you only remaining with back duty and tax investigation, as well as what else, anti, Transfer pricing, the are theory, but we can do one question on transfer pricing. Good.